Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go ahead and do a review on the Monster Light Hip Thruster Bench from Rogue Fitness. So let's get into it. All right guys, what do I think of this bench? Well, right off the bat, it's gonna be $245 plus shipping, handling, and taxes. And there are some major design flaws in my opinion. So we're gonna talk about the specs first and then we'll get into those design flaws a little bit later. We're gonna be looking at a length of 49 inches, but the pad itself is only gonna be 41 inches. So what do I mean by that? The actual attachment with the brackets at the very end is gonna be 49 inches, but the pad inside where you're doing the actual hip thrusters is only gonna be 41 inches. Now the actual width is gonna be 10 inches, but the actual padding itself that is inside is only going to be seven inches. Now, there's more than enough padding when it comes to this bench. You're gonna be looking at 2.25 inches on the top, and then the side is gonna have a little bit less at 1.5 inches. This bench is gonna be exclusively made for the 43 inch space for the Rogue Monster Lights, so you're gonna to have to have that type of rack. And it's gonna be made with a two by four inch 11 gauge steel for the body, and the steel for the bracket is gonna be 5 16 this bench is gonna come in at a whopping 32 pounds, which is gonna be a bit heavy when you're trying to go ahead and actually put it on your rack and set it up. But per Rogue standards, everything has gotta be built like a tank. So this is no exception. Let's get to the design flaws. In my opinion, there's three. The first one is on the brackets, there's a zero UHMW. There is nothing to protect those brackets from smacking into your uprights and scratching off the paint. Now, number two, this is a pain in the butt to actually set up on your rack. You're gonna have to pull kind of a balancing act. You're gonna sit there and have to put it up on one knee. You're gonna have to put the pin in on the one side and hopefully it lines up right. Get that in there. And then you're gonna have to do like a shimmy over to the next side and line up that and get that other pin in there all while doing this by yourself. So if you guys do have somebody who you're lifting with, it's probably a good idea to get some help with it, but you can do it by yourself. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. And to me, that's just a major design flaw. They should have built something where it's kind of like the Rogue Monster light arms, the safety arms, where they have the welded peg on one side, so all you have to do is slide it in. And then all you really need to do is worry about the other side. You could shimmy over, pop the pin in, no issues whatsoever. Probably take 30 seconds compared to, I don't know, I think it took me a minute to go ahead and put that on there. Now, the last design flaw is huge. When it comes down to the height of hip thrusters, I usually look at somebody like Brett Contreras, the glute guy, and he's recommending 13 inches to 19 inches for the recommended height for doing hip thrusts. Now, when you have this thing attached to your actual rack, you're looking at just shy of 20 inches for a height. Now, that is very tall for doing hip thrusters. Brett Contreras actually made his hip thruster bench at 16 inches because he felt that, that that is the most ideal height for doing hip thrusters. So at 20 inches, you're looking at four inches higher than his idea height, and then you're looking at over an inch for his maximum recommended height for doing hip thrusters. Now the problem comes down to it when you try to get that last hole on your upright, your cross member is completely in the way. So you can't actually get the last hole that I think it's intended for, you have to get the hole above it. And that's where the height comes in a problem. So when you're doing hip thrusters and you're maybe using just the 45s, it's not that big of a deal. I can usually handle it, no problem. But when I go ahead and I add the other 45 on there, then it's kind of a pain in the butt because then I have to sit there and put a little more effort into getting set up and putting more effort into getting set up means I get less of an actual workout when doing the exercise. So I feel like this is just a huge design flaw. So those three design flaws, I would love to see Rogue do something about it. If you guys wanna help, make sure you guys hit that like button because I know I'm a small channel, but if somebody from Rogue actually sees this video, I would love them to go ahead and redesign this hip thruster bench. So Rogue, if you guys are watching, change those three things. Add some UHMW, change the design so it's more like the safety arms where there's one peg on one side so you can just pop it in there. All you have to do then is worry about the second side and then really fix the height issue. Use an L bracket. An L bracket is gonna drop down far enough where it's probably gonna give you a three inch difference compared to the 20 inch height that you have right now. 
So guys, unfortunately, due to those three design flaws, I don't think that this bench is something that's worth buying. Again, $245 could probably save your money and hopefully Rogue does a revision. I mean, in the past, they have definitely done different revisions of their stuff. So hopefully they see these reviews because I know when you look at Rogue's website, there are a lot of negative reviews explaining the same things that I just talked about. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this review. If you guys did, I appreciate you guys hitting that like button. If I missed anything whatsoever, go ahead and leave me a comment. If you guys don't wanna miss any future videos, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.